piano lessons, uh, classical piano lessons from the age of 10 uh, and during my uh, classical lessons I'd been introduced to some boogie woogie and barrel house sort of style ragtime piano um, and so from then I kind of self-taught myself uh, 12 bar blues and the form of that, I didn't really understand what I was doing but I was improvising um, on one of those sort of things and it was only when I was 14 or 15 that some jazz musicians from London came to my school and did a, uh, a jazz workshop. And that was uh, Nick Weldon, Jeff Klein, Olav Vass and Trev Tompkins, who were quite legendary in the British jazz scene. And they sparked an interest in me to ex explore more than just like the 12 bar blues and the, the blues harmonies into the jazz harmonies with the chord extensions like ninths and things like that. So uh, yeah, that's where it started really. And from then on, I, I just had tunnel vision. That's what I wanted to do, was play, play jazz piano. In terms of influences, it, the very first influences would have been my parents' record collection. So I, uh, at about sort of 10 years old, I started playing their records. Uh, my, I got a, a second-hand record player from a car boot cell and so in my bedroom at 10 I had the ability to listen to music on my own rather than just my parents playing records. So then I'd borrow their records and listen to them and that included a lot of um, music from their generation, you know, they were sort of the 60s generation so there would have been Santana Abraxas was one of their favourite albums so I listened to that a lot, um, Cream, Eric Clapton, uh, Jimi Hendrix, um, Electric Ladyland. I remember that album blowing my mind. You know, put, putting headphones on and just listening to 1983. If a merman, I should turn to be. And that, you know, that's very experimental music for for a ten year old to mm. kind of fathom. Um, so yeah, that was the formative years. Um, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, um, Dudley Moore Trio, um, Bob Dylan. So it was quite an eclectic kind of mix of music. Um, and as regards my own playing, um, because I collected records from an early age, I got into sort of the crate digging kind of community, I guess, uh, as um, in my late teens, after collecting records and going to record shops. Um, you know, pre-internet pre days, that was the only way to discover music, was friends' recommendations and my parents' record collections. And then I moved to Stockholm in 2000, uh, where I met some amazing uh, record collectors who introduced me to some really really incredible records uh, and it's just been a, a musical evolution from then again it's a, a voyage of self-discovery realizing what records have influenced me maybe subliminally and not as uh, obvious as, as others but um, one record which uh, really changed my my perspective on jazz was a uh, soft machines third album um, and I think Mike Ratledge is a very big influence although I didn't really realize it at first but the more I listen to my my music the more I can hear his influence in there especially the, like I say the third album is so ahead of its time um, you know it sort of predates a lot of the ambient stuff as well as the sort of the fusion stuff I mean when I was much younger it was sort of people I'd listen to like Horace Silver and and pianists like that but I sort of outgrew that kind of genre of and the sort of just everything sort of blossomed I suppose uh, so four albums this year and in a period of maybe 12 years 20 odd albums 
so, but each one I have to make diff different from the last. I don't like to repeat myself. And that's tricky because as a musician, you have a bag of tricks, you know, you have your repertoire or your, um, your licks. So I try not to repeat myself. I think it fundamentally goes back to our roots in, as humans, whether we're sitting around a fire telling stories or singing or clapping or dancing. There's, there's something about our humanity and the shared experience of, of music. What, what we're in danger of becoming is focusing too much on um, being insular working on a computer screen, whether it's music or, or anything. I think what really, when humanity shines is when we come together as a group, whether it's watching a, a football game and cheering, you know, together, you know, that group mentality or playing in a band where things happen um, without conscious thought, you know? So it's almost like a tele telepathy. Um, those are the greatest moments, I think, and that can lead to, you know, the salvation of, of us as a species. We've got to keep that. It's like our folk roots, people coming together to share, you know, music. <laughs>